You're watching the Norfolk Southern Sherwood Subdivision. And in this segment of our improvements to the town of Sherwood, we're going to take a look at painting the track. This is Sherwood as we saw it in the last segment, with all the mocked up buildings in place. What we're going to do is we're going to paint the track. And the reason we're doing that is right here. The proximity of this wall that will be built to the track itself, both of them, will prevent us from painting that track after the wall is installed, so we have to do it before then. And the amount that we have to do starts way down here. Right there, where the painting stopped. And continues way over here. This is the end of the curve around Sherwood right there. Actually right there. So, what we're not going to do is we're not going to paint the tracks in the foreground. And the reason we're not going to paint the tracks in the small yard is right here there's going to be a switch cut in that goes to Martin Manufacturing. So there's no reason to paint all this if we're just going to add track afterwards. So that's today's exercise. We will do a number of things during this process. First of which is we will get rid of all these structures. We will do some cleanup. We will select a method of painting and then we'll proceed with the actual painting after we've masked off all the surfaces that don't get painted. So stay tuned for that. First step, vacuum the surface. I want to get all the dirt out of there that we can. Of course that process is known as hoovering for those of you in the UK. Having finished our vacuuming, we'll proceed to the next step. Well, we're back at the Norfolk Southern Sherwood Subdivision. And as you can see, we're about to clean the track. And why are we cleaning the track again? I thought we just did that. Well, we've got dust and dirt out of there. But there is probably grease, oil, uh, things left from soldering, uh, organic compounds of various kinds that you don't want on your track and the paint won't stick to your track if they're on there. So we're going to use this product. It's denatured alcohol, as you can see. We're going to have a little jar of it. And the area we're going to clean is all of this track. You can see we've masked it all off. The only thing that's showing is the track. So, without further ado, let's clean some track. If you don't do this, you're risking your paint not sticking. So this will have a nice, clean, oil-free surface when we're done. And we are done. So we'll let that dry and we'll go on to the next step. Back in the Norfolk Southern Sherwood subdivision, and you might have thought we were ready for painting, but not quite. What we need to do is protect our turnouts. There are two points on the turnout that you, sh you should not paint. This point here, where the rails slide back and forth, put some tape over that. We don't want any paint in there because that will destroy the contact between the point rails and the stock rails and you won't get very good electrical conductivity. Likewise, the pivot here, where the point rails go back and forth, if you were to get paint into there, the point rails would not go back and forth. So you don't want that either. So we're going to mask that off. And we're going to do that for all the turnouts we have in the lake. Well, we're back on the Norfolk Southern Sherwood subdivision, and we're going to paint the track. Why would we paint the track? Well, here's why. Take a look at this track. This is the unpainted portion of the Sherwood small yard. And here's what you see. You see the shiny edges of the rails. The web of the rails is showing. You see the black ties. I don't know any railroad that looks like this. And furthermore, I don't know any railroad that I've seen on YouTube, for example, 
that I would consider to be good looking that doesn't have painted track. So here's a reason to paint your track. This track has been painted and ballasted. And I think you'll notice a significant difference in its appearance and realism. This is much more realistic and representative of track than you would find on an actual railroad. Now the time has come to paint the track, but we have to know what paint we're going to use. Here's a popular choice. It's Rust-Oleum Camouflage. We've seen this used on a lot of railroads on YouTube successfully. I tried it and I didn't like it for two reasons. One, it's a solvent-based paint. It stuck up the house and my wife didn't like that. So she has outlawed solvent-based paints. Therefore, we have to go with non-solvent-based or water-based paints, mostly acrylics. The second, and I think most important reason, under my lighting, it had a purple color. And that clearly was not what I was looking for. Which brings up a good point. If you're gonna choose a paint, maybe you should get a small piece of track a couple of different paint paints and try them under your lighting on the track that you have. And I think this will yield a better result. In my case, I chose this. It button. is Microlux custom blended, as they say, hobby acrylic railroad tie brown. And when I did the test that I described, I found that this had the best appearance under my lighting. Your results may be different. So now we have a paint. How are we going to apply the paint? Well, those of you who have concrete ties, your options are limited. You can't spray paint because that gets paint on the ties and you like the concrete look. So you could use something like that. It's a micro brush. Put it in the web of the rail. Paint it that way. You could also yield or get better results or similar results with a small paintbrush. They also sell paint markers that you could use. In my case, since I'm painting all the rails and the ties, and the reason I'm doing that is my track is Walther's track and the ties are black and they don't look very good. They certainly don't look realistic, so I need them to have a brownish color. So we're gonna go all the way with railroad tie brown. The way we're gonna apply it is with my Badger airbrush. So that'll be the next segment, painting the track. Well, now for the main event itself, track painting have my bottle of paint connected to our airbrush, turn on the air compressor. This will be really loud so you won't be able to hear anything after this. And when we get a spray pattern we like, we'll start spraying. Here we go. is now painted. That doesn't mean we're done. Painting the track in real time took about 12 minutes of the actual painting process. So in reality, there's more time setting up for painting than the painting actually took. Airbrush performed flawlessly. There were no clogs. Everything went exactly as we would hope. But there are things to do. First of all, no train can run on this track now because the track tops are covered with paint, so we have to take that off most likely with a track rubber or bright boy. Uh, additionally, we covered up the uh, points and hinges of our switches. We're going to have to remove those covers and do some manual touch up in that area, being careful not to gum up the works. And obviously, we're going to have to remove all the newspaper that's around here. But the good news is we have now completed painting the track. You could have done this with a brush or by other means. We use the airbrush. But we now have track that actually looks reasonable. So I'll give you a comparison. Do you prefer this track? Or 
or this track that we just painted, the first track having been tracked before we painted. I believe you'll say we like to paint a track better. So however you do it, consider painting your track. If you would like to follow the progress of our improvements to Sherwood, stay tuned to this channel. Or consider subscribing to this channel for further updates.